Oh, okay. So, so here's the, uh, the last slide. So here is uh, summaries and or discussions. This is also our opening, quest, opening uh, questions. So first is about how to use the derivable data sets, as I have mentioned in previous slides. So the derivable data sets uh, can be the social media or search engine data sets, and they can provide many derivable index that adapt to many different needs. And however, there's one thing that we have to, uh, we have to pay attention to is that how to validate this kind of uh, derivable data sources. So for it's, here's, a, it's, here's an example. So this is a publication uh, that uh, published, I think, uh, months ago from Harvard University. So this, uh, this uh, research is to analyze the hospital traffic and the search engine data in Wuhan, China. They indicate the early disease activity for 2019. However, for this research, they have uh, several shortcomings. And one of the most important ones is they estimated the hospital traffic based on seven remote sensor images to detect uh, the, the cars that just on the ground. However, there, however there's a, a very important indication here is so for most hospitals in the university in China, they especially large hospitals, they have underground, they have underground parking lot. So for the remote sensing image, this is kind of one um, limitation that is not able to detect the traffic or detect the cars underground. So yeah, so in this kind of session, the result will be not persuasive. And this is also the second question that I want to uh, I, I propose is about how to promote the data reliability. So we, maybe we can we can use multiple uh, data sources to do the uh, cross validation. And and so also, and the other thing is that so right now the confirmed cases and mortality, uh, the numbers are uh, on, actually underestimated. So this is uh, one there was one research uh, published on JAMA. He has estimated estimated that. So the, uh, the official counts of COVID-19 in, in the United States, they underestimate the, the, the death cases as much as 28%. So I think there is, so I think there is no 100% re, uh, reliable data set. So we have to integrate to more different data sets and to have our validations. And third one is how to break the data limitations and fully understand COVID-19. So there is a, there's a point that proposed that Greg Kaplan, this is, he's an editor of the Journal of Political Economy. He mentioned that it is too early to be published papers on the effects of COVID-19 pandemic in top academic journals. Yeah, so yeah, from some perspective, it is right. For example, like the, uh, the, uh, the research about the temperature and also humanity. And at the beginning of the pandemic, some research proposed that the higher temperature and also higher humidity Will, uh, will contain or will slow down the transmission of COVID. However, in the United States, you know, so in the south coast of the United States, uh, several states, some states are, the numbers are going higher, higher and higher. They are breaking the records every, every day. So maybe it is too early to make some conclusions. So that's why we have, uh, we thought we want to build a component-based research framework is want to break the data limitations. Is we also call it is COVID nineteen is panorama puzzle. It's just like uh, so in the puzzle we have a lot of pieces. So for the pieces, uh, each pieces can be a data, can be a method, or can be uh, can uh, can be a model. So we want to uh, link different components, and and we want to make sure that it can be easy to associate, integrate replicate, reproduce, and expand. And then we will can, as time, oh, as time goes by, so over time, we can fully understand COVID-19. And here are the data, uh, data references that I mentioned in this presentation. And we also have some list of, also, list of references here. And I want to thank our collaborators in the COVID-19, uh, the data collections, and also the Harvard University team and the CVT team. Yeah, thanks.